Let's see what we got. I already know what it is, but I'll let you guys see what we got. We have the Ravel 148 scale Rockwell B1B Lancer. This is a monster plane, guys. Huge, huge, huge. Just the box is probably two and a half feet by three and a half feet just for the box. And it's 48 scale. That gives you an kind of idea. It's uh, 90 centimeters long. It's a Revell Germany kit with an 87 inch wingspan. Um, the B1Bs are actually um, the version round two of the of the B1 bomber. The original B1 was designed to be a supersonic uh, bomber, and it was part of the uh, the Reagan war machine, and then they got thrown on the back burner and came back later on as the B1B which was designed and operated more as a a low altitude map of earth map of the earth type type bomber uh, but uh, it's way cool and uh, this comes with a special super decal set and give me just a second here and we'll adjust the uh, camera and We'll look in the box. Okay, here's a little bit of detail from the side of the box. Uh, the landing gear, bomb bays, weapons load, uh, crew cockpit, that stuff. It's uh, let's see if I can get the particulars here. Uh, 272 pieces, call or call out, uh, 272 pieces will automatically make it uh, skill 5. Of course the box has some history on the, on the plane. And now let's get into this puppy. Give you an idea. That's the vertical stabilizer. That's my hand. 148 scale, guys. My hand. Vertical stabilizer. Just the size of the fuselage alone. That's the nose. Part of the nose section here. Show and focus here. That's the cockpit. Dang it. This is no tiny little bird. I don't even fit in the frame. That's the uh, main part of the fuselage there. Top section and the lower section. <coughs> Just that part, but long is two, about two feet long. The next bag has coordinates. See what shows here. That's one landing gear strut, and it's the size of my thumb. It's just freaking huge. I know. I said huge, big, awesome, cool. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. You can almost fit a World War II 148 scale plane in the bomb bay, it looks like. 
Here's the uh, engine pods. They're about eight or nine inches long, three inches wide. There's a horizontal stabilizer. Again, my hand just barely covers it. And there's a Folks, that's a wing. That's one wing. You get about 18. Well, let's throw, let's throw a stick on it just for giggles. This one wing is 15 inches long. The uh, clear parts are smoked, kind of nice. And I'm piling some of this back in here. This is the older, older version of the kit that has the rubber tires. The newer version of the kit. Um, has a different set of decals and then the wheels are plastic. This is the old say the older version with the rubber tires. You can uh, check out the instruction sheet on Revell.com. They have a PDF you can download so I won't go through all that. Take any only difference is this one has the rubber rubber tires instead of the plastic ones. Here's our decal sheet. We've got uh, two different variants on here. One with the all gray scheme or one with the camo scheme. I will probably be doing the all gray scheme and I may actually order another set of decals for it so that I can uh, assign this plane to the uh, Air Force Base in uh, South Dakota where my uncle was a crew chief on a bomber way back when God was little we used to go visit him visit him there um, the ones that come with the kit uh, it's Dyer's Air Force Base, 7th uh, Fighter Wing, 7th Bomber Wing, 9th Fighter Squadron, and the 96th Bomber Wing, 337th Bomber Squadron, both again from, from Dyer's Air Force Base, one with the green and one with the camo scheme. There's 80. See that? 87 stages before you get to the decals. <coughs> Interesting thing about the kit that I noticed reading the instructions is you basically build the whole thing into find it here. You're building three sub-assemblies for the kit. You're building the nose section, the sub-assembly, the main fuselage section is a sub-assembly, and the tail section is a sub main sub-assembly. And the three part the three sections don't actually come together until step number 79 of of 87. That kind of makes it nice you can well, one part is maybe drying or paint drying or parts setting up you can work on another section now so that's that one monster I'm not gonna say the H word kit um, because of the kit size and stature 
Only because it's so not gonna say that word. <coughs> I went on to eBay, and Kenny did this also after I after I told him I was going to <coughs> ordered a set of metal landing gear instead of using the plastic. Because one of the comments I'd read on this model online was that because of the weight that the uh, the plastic landing gear just weren't really up to the task and they were recommending at that point either right getting the metal gear which I got or actually drilling out drilling through the metal strut or plastic struts and putting metal rods in so I grabbed a set of um, the metal landing gear for this kit and um, played with a little bit basically you just uh, it, goes, it looks like it goes together really well and you're just building up or on the kit uh, say the one main the main gear strut maybe one or two pieces here on this one it's, it's four or five pieces but it's really easy to figure out see how they go together so we got that added to it and I think the, I think they were around twenty dollars delivered for that set and see all the everything the good the bad and the ugly so I'll shoot some few still pictures to put on this and then uh, we get this up and then once again I want to say thank you Kenny thank you Kenny thank you Kenny so see you later guys have a good one mm -hmm.